think we've got this. I think we might have this if we're... Oh, no. What? They're pushing us back? Hello, reformers, and welcome back to Warband Native. Now, when we left off, we were attempting to defend Yerbe Castle against King Yaroglek. And, uh, well, we were actually kind of, sort of, kind of, meh, not really successful. But... It seems like he didn't take it, but he actually did. Yes, he actually did take it, and then we took it back. And I believe Lord Druly is on an absolute spree at the moment, because he actually did take Ismirala Castle as well, and I don't exactly know how he did that. I mean, Ismirala Castle, it didn't have that many units in, so maybe if... I don't know, maybe if Lord Druly had about 150, maybe 200 units, he probably would have been able to take that pretty easily, and I didn't know that he was doing that, because obviously I was all the way over here just recruiting as many Kurgit units as I could get my hands on. Now, you may be wondering why I'm outside Telrog Castle. Well, there's a simple explanation for that. The Nords decided, after our truce agreement was expiring, to declare war against us once again. So they're, they're wanting to kill us. This is my army at the moment. I have 122 out of 129. As you may see, I have 36 Kurgit Lancers, just purely for the fact that they are extremely quick to level up with my trainer skill at the moment. So anyway, there's 154 here. They do have 41 veterans and 17 Huskars, but personally I feel like this is a better idea than attempting to take, for example, Cure Ore, or maybe even Sargoth. So let's just try it and see what happens. Is it a Siege Tower by the... No, it's not a Siege Tower. That's great. And as you can see, Yebe Castle is now constantly under siege all the time. There's also a couple of other places that are under siege as well because... We have taken them, and not me. I haven't done anything. It just seems like Lord Druly has gone with a couple of his friends and taken Yebe Castle, among other things, and, well, we can only hope that they decide to keep it. Now, King Yaroglek has run around and has been attempting to retaliate, but for the most part, he hasn't been able to, and I'm not entirely sure why. It seems like he's just a little bit lazy. So he's just like, yes, I'm going to besiege this, and then he leaves after about a second. And, uh, yeah, I, cause I, I know this because I was actually going to one of, oh, I'm getting absolutely massacred here. But yeah, I was actually going to one of the places that he was going to attack, cause I thought to myself, okay, that's gonna be a good place for me to, you know, begin an episode or something like that. And, uh, no, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. He just left. So it could be because I was there, and that I was, I was, uh, <laughs> You know, scaring him off a little bit. I don't think so, but maybe it is. I don't know. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's just try and do a little bit of damage here and there with my bow. And then we can hopefully get up here and win the day. I'd very much appreciate it at the very least, but I don't exactly know whether we'll be able to. As you can see, our Swadian Knights, Vagian Knights, all that sort of stuff, they're going down really fast. And I don't exactly know why that would be, because... They're, they're very good, you know? They're very good units, but I guess there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of Nord... Nord veteran archers here. Mm, yes. Could you... Could you just get in there? Yes. Yes, it seems like we are actually getting in there now, and this sharpshooter is going to push me off if I allow him to... Yep. Exactly. This is what happens. This is exactly what happens if you allow your archers to just charge straight on in here. So I'm going to try and remove my archers from the equation. There we go. Ooh, this is actually not... Ooh, this is actually kind of dangerous. This is actually very dangerous. I have no shields right now. So if I'm, if I'm unable to defend myself appropriately versus these fellows, we should have a pretty easy time of dying. Yeah, this is exactly it. Okay, so hopefully I can run in here, maybe do a little bit of damage, try and distract our enemies a little, and maybe... Yeah, there we go. Now our units are getting into the thick of things, and then their reinforcements spawn in and say hello to us, and that's not very nice. Ah, there's a bunch of them over there. Maybe I can take them out. I'll use the environment to my advantage, as you can see block their line of sight. I'm being shot in the back now, which is not very nice of them. 
but that is to be expected. We are at war after all. I mean, technically, I, personally, I don't know why they declared war against us, because we are basically the largest faction in Calradia right now, so you wouldn't expect the Nords, who are, I think, arguably the smallest, to attack us. It wouldn't, it just doesn't make sense. You know, logically, you would think, okay, they may, may, you know, maybe going to attack the Vagiers, maybe going to attack the Rodox or something like that. I mean, the Vagiers are obviously within striking distance, so technically, they would be a good idea, you know? They'd be a good idea for them to go after, but no, they decided to go after the largest faction. Very strange, very strange decision-making on King Ragnar's part, but, well, if he wants to, then who am I to say, no, Ragnar, do not do that. No, I'm not his advisor after all, so anyway, let's get out my bow and see if I can get a nice headshot. Yeah, there we go. One headshot. Oh, actually, did, did, I get, did I get another headshot earlier on? No, I think maybe not. Anyway, there you go. That was actually pretty easy in comparison to what I thought it would be, even though we did lose 78 of our units. I mean, it's kind of to be expected with that many veteran archers. I, I've said time and time again, the veteran archers are not that bad, you know, just because they are the worst ranged units, it doesn't mean that they are bad by any means, you know, I mean, yes, if you're going to put them up against, you know, Vagia Marksman or something like that, then obviously they're going to be worse in terms of ranged capability, but they're still capable of dealing massive damage if you allow them to, and obviously we did have a bit of an issue there. Anyway, let's see what I can do about regaining some of my power because obviously I did lose a whole bunch of units here, and I'm hopeful that we'll be able to gain quite a few good ones. And then we can move on to maybe taking Sargoth, because what I'd like to do is try to focus on the Nords at the moment, because if I don't, they're going to once again do that thing that they do, which is of course to you know, wage war against us a little bit, and then be like, oh, peace, peace, please, uh, another truce. And then they're gonna, you know, build up their forces and come come at me, you know, a little bit stronger. And uh, yeah, it's not gonna be very good. So let's just see if I can maybe eliminate them this time, which might be a good idea. I'm gonna take some peasant women here and the, this huntress as well, because obviously they are going to become sword sisters, and I very much appreciate them. And we're not gonna take any loot. There we go. Alright, so I actually have no idea who I'm going to be giving these things to because every time I do this, I just cannot remember which one has a good amount of relation with us. So I guess I'm just going to give it to... I think I've gone through all... I've gone through the list. Have I not gone through the list? Let's give it to Urube. Yes, Urube. There we go. Okay, so he's now at 100 again, which is good. And there you go. All right. That's actually not too bad. Let's rest up for a little bit, and then we'll see what we can do at Sargoth. And, uh, well, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to actually be able to eliminate them, but we're going to try our best. Oh, do you see that? We have a couple of our vassals actually passing by here. They must have been in the area already from Lord Druli's little mini campaign that he was launching. And you can see here that Jarl Matthias is attempting to raid Veyajeg or Veyajeg or whatever the, whatever it's called. So yeah, we're going to actually go over here and take him out. He is a Rodok vassal who has defected to the Nords. And speaking of the Nords, by the way, King Ragnar himself has declared his intention to besiege Yerbe Castle, which is, of course, the one that we were fighting King Yaroglek over. And it's kind of a bit weird, really. I, I guess that's the reason why the Nords actually declared war against us, because we have a whole bunch of fiefs that are relatively, well, poorly defended, really. They are not very well defended at all. They have a very you know, sparse skeleton garrison, and it's, well, maybe telling that he decided to declare war against us. He was obviously having his scouts out there, his spies, being able to know exactly what was happening in our nearby garrisons, and maybe that's the reason why he did that, because then he's able to expand his territory without any losses, really. So... Maybe it's good on him that he decided to do that, but 
In general, I don't know really whether that was a good idea. There's Lord Raucher. He has 175. He doesn't have very, uh, he doesn't have many Vagia marksmen, but he has a huge amount of Vagia veterans, and he has some nice Vagia guards and knights and all that sort of thing. So I don't have to worry about him losing a battle anytime soon. And who else do we have here? Lord Akadan. Lord Akadan is pretty awesome too. He's got 46 Kurgit lancers as well as 51 veteran horse archers. Anyone that wants to fight him on the fields of battle is certainly going to have a big problem on their hands. Anyway, let's see if I can eliminate Jarl Tansugai, who is attempting to run away from me. This is not going to work. Or is it? No, there's nowhere over there that he can run to, so I don't exactly know why he ran here instead of going into Sargoth. That was a bit strange, but oh well, never mind. Okay, so this fellow is Kurgit, I assume. So I'm going to just charge against him, because if we can charge against him, we'll have much more offensive ability than he will. And... Hopefully we'll be able to get there before he decides to charge at us. And I think... Whoa, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it, I get it. Yes, you're very, very damaging. I understand. Let's see if I can do a little bit of damage to this, these fellows back here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no. I've just realized that they actually have a huge amount of horse archers here, and that's exactly the reason why I thought to myself, okay, we have to charge them immediately. Because if we allow these veteran horse archers to go where they desire... They're going to draw this entire battle out way too much. I mean, you can already see this is the classic the classic pattern right here on this mini-map. Absolutely classic horse archer tactics, where they will literally go into the corners of the map and they'll try to do as much glancing damage as they can. And eventually it is going to weaken us so much. Oh, I was hopeful that I'd be able to kill that guy, but no, no, he escaped. Weaken us so much that we'll start to lose people, and that's not very good. But thankfully, we have a huge amount of cavalry on our side anyway. If we didn't, if I was playing with the Nords, for example, then those horse archers, they might actually be rather effective. But thankfully, I have my own mobility squad, as it were, and we're able to very easily eliminate that fellow. All right. Okay, so we're doing a pretty decent job here of just basically clearing out the territory, making sure that we're going to be safe enough if the worst were to happen at Sargoth here. And I'm going to try and take Sargoth. There is Wercheg over there, and I think that's actually it. Yeah, that is all that the Nords own. They don't own anything else. So, theoretically, if we are able to take this, which is, in my opinion, highly unlikely... Wow, yeah, it is highly unlikely. I'm actually unsure how... Uh, what are the forces like at Wercheg? I actually have no idea, but I don't really want to leave just in case someone decides to reinforce their garrison here. But how, can, can it get any better? Can it get any better for them? I mean, they have... What do we have here? 11 Huskals, 90 veterans, 75 warriors, 105 veteran archers. The only way that I will be able to take Sargoth at this point is either calling for a campaign of some kind and just outnumbering the enemy in some way, or, I don't know, just having a good layout, I guess. Just having a good, good layout for our opponents to get slaughtered in. And uh, let's see if I can... Let's see if I can actually get some people to come along here and maybe we'll be able to besiege it together. And Harringoth Castle has been besieged multiple times, by the way. It's all the way in Swadian territory. It's kind of, well, technically it's not Swadian territory anymore. It's technically our territory, but you know what I mean. All right, so there's a fellow from the Vagir. not going to chase him. I'm going to just wait here and see if some of our vassals will turn up. Oh, hello, Lord Akadan. Thank you very much for turning up and maybe helping me. Oh, we have another one too, Lord Merchild. He has, well, actually a whole bunch of pretty decent Swadian units. And there's Lord Talbar. I think Lord Talbar needs a couple more fiefs because as you can see he actually doesn't have a very large army so it would be kind of nice for us to give him some more so if we win this i'm going to give it to lord talbar if i can remember and thankfully sargoth is a ladder town as well so it's going to be even easier for us to head in here now i'm i'm feeling a little bit guilty here because i'm not entirely sure whether our vassals were actually doing something important you know i didn't really want to take them away from something that is 
going to actually get us an additional fee for defend somewhere relatively important. So if that is indeed the case, I apologize to my vassals ahead of time. But uh, we kind of needed to take this. We kind of needed to take, take this. As you can see, though, we are already on the battlements. And this is exactly what you get if you have a very, very short ladder. As you can see, it's a very, very short ladder indeed. I'm getting shot at, which is to be expected. I mean, really, we are the leader of the enemy faction after all. We are very important. If we go down, then the snake has no head. So, yeah, we're going to have to try and... Oh, no. It's this one. Oh yes, Sargoth has the same layout as the other layout that I was talking about previously, where my strategy was basically just to try and rush them as quickly as possible, and uh, try and get in to the second section of Battlements. Because if you can get in there, I think you're going to have a much easier time of things. I'm going to try and shoot a couple of enemies over here. And maybe that's going to work out. It's not going to work out, is it? No. It's seriously not. Okay, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure what I can do here. I'm going to try and just shoot this archer. I'm, I'm kind of surprised I didn't get a headshot there, but oh well, never mind. Okay, I'm going to try and get my archers up here. Now, how many archers do I actually have? Not many. Not many, but hopefully they'll be able to help me out. And hopefully we'll be able to eliminate... Come on, eliminate the last... Yeah, there we go, there we go. Okay, actually, please, now, start pushing up there, please. I'm, I'm unsure why that one fellow is just standing there. Yes, that is a bit of an issue. The AI does tend to be a little bit slow in getting up these, these steps. So it's not particularly great, but hopefully we'll have a good chance of succeeding. Oh, yeah, here we go. Okay, this is where we want to be. This is exactly where we want to be right now. This is perfect. Now, if I can survive and make sure that I kill as many enemy units as possible, and I'm actually going to tell my archers to charge in right now because I think we're going to need as many people reinforcing our position here as possible. So even if that means sacrificing a couple of archers, I think that's worth it. I think it is worth it, and I'm going to try and get some of our archers, some of their archers, shall we say, to stop firing away and hopefully get them into melee, because we're probably going to be able to beat them in melee at the very least. So, I think we've got this. I think we might have this if we're... Oh no, what? They're pushing us back? Are you serious right now? Oh, this is not good. This is not good at all. Okay, I'm going to get shot in the back. I am very much likely to get shot in the back. Yep, there we go. There's a little bit of it. A little bit of the damage. Ah, uh, this is not good. This is not good. Maybe... Hey, you know what? Maybe I should have auto-calculated. I think we have a lot of units here, but... Whenever I've auto-calculated in the past, it has always gone badly. That's usually why I tend not to do it. Unless I have a very, very big advantage in terms of the numbers. So in other words, a thousand to a hundred or something like that. But I've never really done auto-calculation when it's been relatively even. So let's just see if I can maybe get a little bit more in here. There's a bunch of warriors that we're having to fight now. Well, they have, what, I, I don't know, 90 or something? 90 or something warriors here, so that's pretty bad for us. And then their veterans, obviously, we're going to have to fight those as well. But hopefully if we can eliminate as many veteran archers as possible, we won't have to fight them later down the line. And that's obviously going to make things much, much easier for us. Now, how many have we lost so far? Well, technically, we haven't lost that many. And I'm talking about Barney's army here. Because, obviously, he has a pretty small army in comparison to many of his vassals. So, oh, yeah. You see, now, this is exactly what the AI tends to do. They tend to... Well, kill me. They tend to kill me. That's exactly what happens. Yes. Anyway, we did actually do a pretty decent amount of damage right here. We lost... Not that many in comparison to our enemies. As you can see, our enemies actually lost 222 out of the 333 that they had available. So, theoretically, if we are able to get in there again, which is... Ooh, who's that? Is that King Ragnar himself? I think it is. Let's actually just abandon the siege real quick. Is it King Ragnar himself? It is, and he has much less 
in the way of offensive capability than he did beforehand, because he hasn't been able to train up his units as much as he would like. Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting. Now, they do have 173 still remaining here, unfortunately. It's kind of weird, really, how that happens sometimes, where they had three... Uh, oh, I, I guess... Yeah, I guess it's because of the vassals, isn't it? Yeah, it's because of the vassals providing some kind of buffer with their forces. Okay, well... Let's just actually see how I'm doing here. I'm at 21%. That's absolutely awful. We have to wait until Jeremus gets back on his feet. And then hopefully we'll be able to start getting ourselves, well, back on our feet as well. Because obviously we are needing his medicinal skills to pay the bills, in other words. Yes. Now, King Ragnar has left, which is interesting. Not entirely sure why he would do that. Oh, he des he's deciding to take his Marana Castle. As I say, Lord Druli was around that area, and I think he actually did take that. Now, who do we have with us right here? Lord Urobe, Lord Talbar, Akadan, Murchild. Okay, I think I think we should be able to take this, but what do they have remaining? They have 50 warriors and 85 veterans. Yeah, and they also have 38 archers, of course, but I think we should be... All right. Oh, there's the other king. The other king is attempting to take Yerbe Castle now. So, yes. Great, isn't it? Yeah. I think, personally, they should just gang up on us to try and defend Sargoth. Because if they really, really want to defeat us in some grand fashion, then that would definitely put paid to, to our offense, in my opinion. I mean, you know, you've seen King Yaroglek's army. He has, like, what? I don't know. A pretty large amount. Pretty large amount. He's got, like, 300 or something. And I think... Yeah, you saw King Ragnar's army there, he has about 200 or so, so they could be fighting us with about 500 units. And that's pretty decent, you know, that's pretty decent. So, yeah, maybe maybe they could have done something there, but I guess they just want to take territory and try and expand their influence as much as possible. Alright, so at least I've gotten in here. I'm pretty low, so I am probably going to die. But not after I slaughter a whole bunch of enemies, I hope. I'm going to get shot in the face now, aren't I? That's usually how it goes, isn't it? Actually, you know what? I'm just going to get killed by some random archers. Yeah. That sounds like a much more fashionable idea, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, okay, well, never mind. I think we actually are going to be able to take this. I mean, it, I think it is literally just a, ma a matter of time, really. But the time that it takes is obviously dictated by our medicinal skills and obviously our vassals sticking by us because if they don't stick by us then well <laughs> ah that definitely put pay to that didn't it yes it certainly did yeah i guess what i'm gonna have to do is be much more careful when i'm entering the castle but it's actually not even that big a deal because we eliminated another 50 and many of our vassal armies are taking the full brunt of the attack here so I don't think I really need to worry at all about anything that's going on with our army right now. I mean, you can see here that many of our forces are still perfectly intact. And, uh, well, hopefully we'll be able to eliminate Sargoth and then head on to Wercheg in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.